Omu at the top of the waterfalls looking down this like 150 foot cliff over this misty city. It is the 10th day since you left Kur Sabal having uh, Ashara perform a magic ritual on you guys, it gave you wings. She danced around, poured Red Bull on all of you, you know how it goes. It's midday, and which means you have about four hours of flight left before, you're, before the ritual ends and you return to your groundbound uh, postures. Over the past day, you know, the, the morning here, you guys flew a bit of a reconnaissance loop um, in two parts. First, heading south to the center of that large ring on the eastern midsection of the city, and then flying northwest towards the amphitheater. The other of you decided to take that distance and go straight south for the pillar inside the area with all the lava. And you discover that several of these buildings are in various states of ruination. Um, there was a history lesson uh, about the nine gods that you received, uh, courtesy of some of your Chaltian uh, natives in the party. Ancient cool. natives. <laughs> <laughs> Ancient native. Yep. And uh, oh, the only one you that met them. also discovered that a T-Rex is sleeping in the uh, stage of the amphitheater. But we let him uh, nap. That's up to you guys. So you guys are currently all standing at the top of this waterfall uh, in and the northeast we... section of the city. I think completed or no, no, no. We were we were talking about long rest, but we still have four hours. I bust out yeah. the pan flute and start playing Careless Whisper. I put a cork in it. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing of note, um, for those of you who may have forgotten, is that. Around these cliffs, every uh, hundred feet or so, there is this vine-draped gargoyle just staring down at the ruined city, uh, each of them having the face of a devil with its mouth agape in a silent scream. Uh, you've approached several of them, and they did not do anything. I feel like we should just start knocking some of these down and see what happens. No. That sounds like a terrible no, no. Yeah, let's, um, well, now we got our cartographer here, so let's, uh, let's start yeah. mapping out and, uh, doing some scouting. We've got four hours, and, um. Yeah, can we do, like, some laps around the city or something to just get a full layout of it? I think we should look for, we, yeah, we have four hours. I think we should look for a good spot to, um, make a permanent, like, semi-permanent camp. We'll start flying low, uh, scouting the streets and stuff like that, looking for good uh, paths that we can use and stuff from How a single point. How do you feel point. about that market hall? Or was that too close to the uh, T-Rex? What about um, that place that's got the big circle? On the right. I was going to suggest that one, because that's far oh, yeah. away from T-Rex. That makes sense. And reasonably fortified. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming mm -hmm. the... Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's... The entire party will fly to the middle bowl of that Top structure in the center of the circle on the uh, right under. God's cereal bowl, as it's called. <laughs> Still not nice. big enough for me. Nice. Okay. So you guys fly over that. You can see that um, you know, as you guys descend down to get a better look, thousands of bats swirl above it. Um, you know, behind the 15-foot-high circular wall. There are crumbling arcades, vine-choked statues, empty plazas, and buildings overgrown with banyan roots. Streets that aren't flooded appear to be choked with rubble. But other than, you know, pests, a la, you know, bats and the like, you don't see anything, uh, you know, moving around down there over much. All right. Um, I'll reach cast a Comprehend Languages, just so I have it up. Okay. So if anyone wants to do anything for 10 minutes to scout this area, by all means, do so. We can um, still fly for 10 minutes? 
No, we could fly for another uh, hour or, or four yeah, hours. Sorry, I just meant four hours from when we took um, off, but it wouldn't take very long to get from because we were at the waterfall to the north of this spot. Yeah, yeah. Getting like just flying in a straight shot and coming down in into this took you all of like ten minutes. Yeah, can I just oh. look inside some of these? Can I just to figure out if this is like a housing area or like a, a shopping district or what? Sure, what make an investigation area? check. I'll be with my sister and help her if possible. Sure, absolutely. Okay, well, that's good because I'm not I'm, good at I'm this. I'm also going to ritual cast comp languages. Yep, and we have separate sets of eyes if we need to split up. Yep, yep. and I can ritual cast detect magic. Ooh. Look at us. Party full of casters. Twelve. Alrighty, so you're looking around here, and, and one thing that does kind of appear obvious is that this has been looted. Um, you can see places where, like, valuables might have once been, but were pried out of walls and the like. You can actually see, like, damage to the walls where crowbars might have been used. As for the function of this area, this... You know, based just on your general idea of, like, how cities tend to work, and the fact that this has, like, a center, like, a, a wall around it, you think this might have been uh, either, like, the central citadel or some other type of government uh, complex. Okay, so, like, just kind of like a city hub, I guess. Like a... Okay. Well, not so much a city hub in the sense that it was the center of town. Um, that... It will generally be more like you would more likely expect city centers to involve like market squares and the like. Um, this is based on the fact that it has a wall around it. Would be, you know, like this would be like the central citadel. So oh, okay. typically, medieval Covered cities. Yeah, yeah. So typically, in like a medieval walled city, um, you would have an outer wall, outer curtain wall. It's kind of surrounds like most of the city proper, and then you'd have a citadel which is actually like a castle inside the city. And that's typically where the ruler would live. You know, whether it's a, a, a lord or a, a burger or whatnot, that would typically be like in the, and they would have its own like inner wall. And there would, that's where you would have like, you know, the escarpment or a moat um, and the like. And that would kind of be like the last refuge for maintaining control. Yeah. Like how wall Maria and wall Rose are all inside of each other in attack on Titan. I gotcha. He doesn't get that reference, but... Yeah, yeah, similar concept. Believe it or not, I did see, like, a couple episodes of the cartoon. Really? Funny. Anime. I'm surprised. <laughs> so you guys went to the pillar in the lava already, right? I did. It was nothing it, important? It was a, it's a temple. It's another oh, one of those temples. I was called Foundry. That's what I was assuming it was. No, so what would you, do you guys feel safer in the Citadel area with a wall, or... On top of a kilo, pillar of lava, what do you guys think is a safer place for us to? Um, there's stay up no the real other way to that pillar without flying. No yeah, safe way. ease of access. Okay, so as in us getting out, not really a way. Okay. What about yeah, the, like, the? We can fly right now, but we won't be able at, to. At the narrowest point, it's a sixty foot gap between that pillar that had that ruin on it, the walled ruin, and the rest of the city. What about the <laughs> southwesternmost little? area oh is that the entrance to omu i mean you guys could see from the air that it looks like there's like some like like a grand staircase there that goes down towards the city you did not actually overfly that area so details are sparse but you, you know like the details you can see on the map that's basically what you guys could achieve based on your current recon maybe not that place then including the fact that you can see that there are raised boulevards that uh, clearly go through massive areas of the city yeah. Um, I say we just stick with the Citadel. Yeah, I agree with yeah. that. So spend, uh, the, that spend the time ahead. with the fly sweeping and clearing this entire area uh, and then uh, securing somewhere in the center for uh, camp. Because we're going to probably be here for a few days yeah. at a minimum. I was going to say, I was hoping we could do a little more in-depth uh, recon, maybe get a more in-depth map of the Citadel area. Sure. Yep. I think that would be the best plan of action. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so uh, whoever wants to do that, go ahead and give me a investigation check to do a little bit more in-depth recon as you start looking around the area. Uh, I got it. People pair with people. If you have proficiency, pair with somebody who doesn't. Person I know. Who doesn't. I yep. do. Someone I pair up with me. All, All right. right. Who do you have proficiency, Adelina? No, that's why I was gonna. Can can I help him since he is proficient? No, he'd have to help you. Proficient oh, people have to help. I'm yeah. dumber than bricks. <laughs> Never mind then. Yeah. Uh, then yeah, we so if we pair up yeah. in groups, we'll have three separate roles. I think. But I'm pretty sure one. myself and Nix have um, proficiency. Who else does? Does anybody? Uh, proficiency in what? Investigation. Investigation. Uh... It's just me and you, baby. We're the, th we're the only two in characters. Doesn't mean they don't have proficiency, but I doubt. Yeah, That's why I'm, I'm asking. I'm deception, intimidation, things like that. All okay. right. And thieves me tools. And I have thieves tools. Irrelevant. That doesn't help on a scouting mission. All right. Well, so, um, so I mean, yeah, whoever, want everyone else to set up check base, base, I can just scout it because I have infinite fly. I have fly forever. Well, we we all have fly for the next couple of hours. True, but like it's not a matter of flying. It's like I said, more more trying to get high rolls so that we uh, yeah have a have a good uh, good what's, map. What's your what's your modifier? Plus six. I'm seven. Okay. All right. Are you gonna assist me? No. Yeah, I'll help you. All right. So yeah, Nix and I will do a a sweep over the entire thing. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, so you guys start kind of sweeping over the entire thing, going real low, looking for uh, obvious signs of uh, life, you know, beyond just critters. And for the most part, these buildings are not in great shape. Uh, lots of them show signs of weather damage. Um, there's rubble strewn throughout the streets. You know, the... Uh, Plants and the like are growing over many of them. There are, as you're kind of sweeping over the air, and you know, you do find two areas of interest. One would be near the out near the uh, wall at about the three o'clock position. Um, you can see that the building appears to be infested with giant wasps. That's cool. That is something. Fire. We should take care of. North of... Yeah. You also notice something. Is that north of the central citadel with the actual spire, um, right where the water like is lapping at, you know, where it's almost flooding but not quite um, at the water's edge, you notice the two-story structure with the red roof. Mm -hmm. um, there are what appear to be tr like cart tracks... Um, going in and out of there that are fresher than the rubble and the like around the city. Okay. So, new marks in old dust. Mm. Newer, yes. It's, okay. They do not appear to be, like, brand spanking new, but they are definitely um, tracks that were placed there after the city was a ruin. Okay. So in the last decade you... or so, for sure. You would Do think we... it's more like within the past month or so. Oh, okay. So Do it's we... not... But not empty. like an hour ago. Yeah. I think we should, uh, as a party, go take care of the wasps and uh, probably use yes. that as our base then. Down. Down. Because we all have fly, so uh, let's... Uh... Uh, aerial battle up. with wasps. Are you telling me yep. I can fucking just... Oh, dude, I'm just gonna... Yeah, I got you. Let's do this. Yep, so uh, buff up if you guys can. I have a... a... Anybody want to give me haste? <laughs> no. Fuck. Have to dare is give me uh, bardic inspiration before we go I... in. I can give you... I can enlarge you, but I'll wait until we're close. Till we're in combat. 
Uh, I only have one third level, so I can send. I can haste somebody, or I can enlarge somebody. I think we could take these wasps. I think we could too. Yeah, but anyway, all right. So who's who's casting enlarge? I'm gonna wait until we are. Yeah, yeah, we're we're that, yes. we're planning. Yeah, since it only lasts yes. a minute. But who I'm are you gonna, casting enlarge cast on? I'm gonna cast it on the barb. Okay, I'll cast reduce on him then. <laughs> <laughs> I, a bard, barbarian, barbarian, oh, okay. barb. Tis Technically, Tadarius is a. Tadarius, are you a bard or a, a barb, a bard or a rogue? I know you're one of the three. He's a barb, barb. Now, barb. Duh. Yep. Duh. Should call variants. Then we there's less confusion. Variants. Yeah. You have bards and variants. Ted. Sounds a little racist to me. Fucking variants. Like bariums, you know what I mean? All right. Variants. All right, anyways. All right. So what's next? To the the wasps? To the wasps. Uh, Yeah, so we're going with enlarge on Cabal. I'll uh, do haste on. uh, Which one are you, Adelina or Savannah? Which one are you, is ranged? Savannah more. Okay. Then I'll haste Savannah. You have Eldritch Blast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you'll be able to zoom in and out of combat and uh, to use that. So you'll... Do you know what haste does? Mm, fast. A lot of things. Yeah. Does it give you a profi- Just... uh, Does it give you a, um initiative bonus, too? It does no. not give you an initiative bonus. Oh, okay. Yeah, just dex saves, unfortunately, not dex ability checks. Mm. That's haste. Gains an additional yep. action of each of its turns. Yeah, haste yep. is sick, dude. Yeah, haste is really nothing, powerful. Nothing like haste in a monk, to be honest. Yeah. Or if you really want to get crazy, you can throw haste on a uh, barbarian monk druid that can wild shape into a bear. That's some real crazy shit. Yeah, wild turbo haste. bear. Turbo yeah. bear. Cocaine bear. Like in multi class. I mean, the way the way he was writing it was more like meth bear, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's crazy that right. it was actually based on a bear in real life. So, um, on uh, Nix's eyes approach, Nix and eyes approach. Uh, how many entrances were there, and uh, how many wasps did we pick out? So, you you saw three wasps, um, kind of buzzing about there. Um, as for entrances, the entire like south wall has just been torn apart and uh you know is, is essentially that's where they like then built their nest like inside the the building from that um there are several you know windows no glass in them just holes in the wall uh along the other walls the roof appears to be a tiled roof though many of the tiles are missing and there are like small like three inch by three inch gaps in the roof Okay. Oh, well, I say we probably go from the south. This is a nice open so we can see straight in before we approach, and then we can buff up. Fireball. I don't have fireball. Damn. I'm not that kind of wizard. Oh, it's right. Uh, Nix's old character had fireball. No, I didn't. Oh, no, you didn't? No, no, he didn't, or I would have fireball. Correct. (laughs) I would have used all of my spell components to copy that spell. Instead, I copied, like, uh, two first levels and two second levels. But anyway, um, so yeah, let's uh, get to the south. Do we want uh, some people on the ground? Because I would like to land and take cover. I am not exactly a um, bash and dash style character. I am a cower and uh, fire kind of character. This is my only chance to fight in the air, man. I'm taking Wait, advantage of it. Before we start, under is the nest. Nest will use his clan bull, correct? Wasps' nests do tend to be somewhat papery and flammable, yes. Okay, so if I took a javelin, put a bit of cloth in the end of it, took out my uh, my tinder box and lit up. Could have just said flaming javelin. Flaming I'll give javelin. yes. I'll give them a flask of oil. Uh, however, um, we're possibly going to be using this as a base. Would hate for it to be, you know, burned to the ground. Oh, you make a good point. Yeah, you make a good point. 
What is the structure made out of? It appears to be adobe. Most of the structures in the city are. Okay. Uh, is it Clay. wet or dry? Yeah, yeah. Is it, is it uh, relatively dry? Everything is wet. Like this, this is this is still chal. It is still drizzling, almost okay. all of the time. So yeah, fire is probably okay for taking out the main nest. It probably won't destroy the structure. Cool. That's what we're planning. Could I could I make that guess with an int of sixteen? Yeah, you could make that guess. All right. I don't like that. I don't like that response from under. <laughs> That's the reason I said that. It was it was fully for under and I to laugh and chuckle at. <laughs> can I make that guess? You can guess as much as you'd like, sir. <laughs> yeah, a lot of yeah the the structures here tend to be a mix of stone and adobe. Um, the none of them are particularly dry. It has been like I said, it drizzles a lot. The wasp nest itself was built in cover. It's probably because the wasps don't want to also be rained on all the time. So I could make an educated guess with a leaning towards yes, that the entire structure wouldn't burn down because of the saturation. You think that the the wasp nest would burn out pretty quickly, given its somewhat airy, papery nature? Um, and that that would give you plenty of time to put out the fire before structural damage started to set in. Do we have means to put out a fire? You know, unfortunately, the wasp nest is opaque. So if the floors are still intact and made of wood, because it's a multi-story structure, um, those timbers are quite likely to catch fire eventually. Oh, quick work. Oh, yeah. How do we put the fire out? Um, would Gary know if Ray of Frost would work for um extinguishing flame in a larger area than uh, Prestidigitation would be capable of? It would not. You would know that really Prestidigitation would actually be more effective. Um, Ray of Frost is essentially literally a ray of cold energy. And it will successfully lower temperatures of objects to below flashpoint, um, but only in a small area. And it's also likely to cause its own type type of damage. Okay. So precipitation would be fastest because I don't have any water bullshit. Precipitation can put out like campfire sized fires. Okay. Um, it's also much less likely to cause a different type of structural damage. <laughs> The shattering kind. Tropical moist environment. Um, so hitting it with mm -hmm. ray of frost is going to cause significant frost damage. Mm -hmm. Expansion explosions. But anyway, okay, so we've got an idea of what we're doing. Uh, we're giving the big guy a flaming javelin, which should grow with him. See. Uh huh. And um, and then uh, we're hasting Savannah. Hey, and I'm going to hide and touch. Ready. I have what? pyrotechnics ready. I have so fireballs ready. Well, I'm saying I can use that to extinguish the fire and turn it into smoke, so they have ex obscured vision as well. Well, we we want to burn the place down first, and then we want to put the fire out. The fight no, will know. probably be Same. over in the effort of putting the fire out, so blinding the wasp won't be a problem. I'm proficient. I'm proficient in construction. That would be useful. Like real life, Dylan. <laughs> so a javelin has a normal 30-foot range and, a, and then the extended max of 120. How far away are you going to get before you try to throw your javelin? With bardic inspiration? I think he's going for the distance. As far as the party without getting the wasps? I mean, thirty feet. How how far apart are the buildings to the south and the uh, yeah. the wasp building? That alley in between. The like roads in that area are only like fifteen to twenty feet across. All right, then uh, we'll start our ambush from that alley to the south. Yeah, it's what thirty feet. Okay, and you're coming in from the air. Um. Let's You're determine flying. that real quick before we start. Who's flying? Yeah. Savannah, you need to be at least within 30 feet of me. Uh, 
I'm wherever Gary is. Yeah. So I'll be <laughs> lower. Because as soon as I cast a spell, I don't need to maintain the distance for the, the haste. Correct. Once you're hasted, I just have to maintain concentration. That's yeah. much easier if I'm not getting attacked. So with the haste, am I better as a distance fighter? Aerial. Or... It, like, yeah, I mean, you get mobility. Get, and you you're going to be super two mobile. Extra fire, two extra Eldritch Blasts. You have four Eldritch Blasts. I'm gonna get hit. Your speed is doubled, sure. Savannah. So your, your 30 feet of flying speed will be 60. So if I you just take... AC yep. 130 them? Exactly. Okay. So you'll be able to zoom at the same... I'm pretty sure wasps have a... Six, I'm guessing here, 60 foot fly speed. It might be more. Um, So you'll be able to pace with them and then, you know, zoom in and out of the battle. That's the whole idea of giving you haste because you're ranged. So you'll be able to uh, stay ranged and take less damage. It's battle yeah. for all of us. What's that? Battle for all of us. Yes, okay. and you need you need to inspire your brother right now. Okay, inspire my brother. Um, yeah, Cabal is throwing a javelin full of fire after he gets enlarged into the uh, the, the wasp nest. Yeah, oh, yeah, enlarge. Okay, well, let's uh, let's figure out the uh, the space spacing and distances. So I'll be at rooftop. Uh, Savannah will be thirty feet above me. Um, the building to the south. I'm gonna be about a hundred feet away. If flying. So probably where? 50 feet oh, <laughs> hundred feet away. <laughs> hundred feet. Where? Uh, to the south. So I'll be rooftop level, hundred feet back. God, dude. So you're uh, gonna be behind Savannah and I. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Pussy. I'm gonna turn invisible <laughs> and be next to the ball. <laughs> Fucking jinx! You owe me a coke. <laughs> All right, Tadarius, where are you going to position yourself? I said I'm going to turn invisible and stick next to Cabal. All right. Do you have any buffed spells you can do or no? Just Bardic. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you'll just spam Bardic's on Cabal so he has um, all the attack damage then, he can manage. Do I need to be in the alleyway yeah. or do I need to be on the rooftop? You can be wherever you'd like as long as you're with – oh, no, Tadarius – or not Tadarius. Nix, you'll have to be close because you have to be 30 feet away from Cabal to cast that. Yeah, and then I need to be 30 feet from the nest. Um, can I'll I? Just, okay. I'll just be ready to throw a shatter. No, 60 feet guys. back from the nest. So Nix is 60 feet back from the nest. Cabal is 30 feet back from the nest. And that leaves Adeline. Where are you, Tommy? What's happening? Where are you? Uh, Right above the nest. So you're straight up? Straight up. Do you want to be Let's a little stay. bit to the south so you can actually get inside easier? Yeah. All right, so you're straight up on the road between the two buildings. How yep. high up do you want to be? 30, 30 feet, feet of fly speed per turn. Okay. All right. Uh, under, did you get all of that? No, I did not. Okay. Because uh, I wasn't sure if you guys were actually done discussing or finalizing. So, Adeline, yep. where are you? 30 feet uh, in between the two buildings. Ab straight up. Okay. Gary? Um, rooftop, the uh, left building, the larger building, towards the center. Okay. And um, I'll be 30 feet below Savannah. Yep. Okay. Cabal? I'm 30 feet away from the nest, I guess. We're in clear vision of it. I guess it's around the alleyway. Yep. All right. Nix? Yeah. Uh, as 30 feet away from Cabal, at hopefully root flying level, just so I can enlarge. On the right side of the buildings. Right side yeah, of the alleyway. Like, okay, like, so you have not enlarged Cabal yet? Nope. I will as soon as the job That's going to be our... Lit. Yeah, that's going to be our niche start, basically. Nick's casting in large, because I'll cast on the same turn on Savannah. All right, and Savannah, what are you doing? Where are I'm you? 30, 30 feet above uh, Gary. Directly okay, ahead. and Tadarius, where are you? Uh, I am with Cabal, but right at the start, when everyone casts, I'm going to cast Invisibility. Okay. So it sounds like this is all kind of going to, you're going to kick off your stuff when Cabal goes around the corner... 
at that intersection face the building and lights his javelin. Do I have that correct? That's that's yeah. kind of your initiating event. All right. Yeah. So you guys start getting position. Cabal, you know, you guys land on your ground, start going up that street to the north, come around that corner. The wasps are there. And you guys should be rolling initiative at this point because the wasps do see you. All right. Hopefully the uh, casters roll high. <laughs> oh, God. Gary, we should roll that. Um, I'm, I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So sweet and large will still go off. As Nyx goes first. Mm -hmm. To Darius, you'll manage to get invisible. And then, uh, yeah, so Savannah, you won't be hasted for the first round, so you have to stick close to me so I can get that off. Copy that. You'll still be able to do stuff, you just won't be hasted on your turn. But I'll still be enlarged and I'll chuck that on yep. me. So we're still good. Yep. Um, well, you'll actually go after me, Cabal, but... Yeah, but still. I thought Cabal got a 18. Oh, no. 12. No, I got 12. All right, all right next. So, you know, you see Cop Hall go around that corner. Yep. What are you doing? Enlarge. All right. And then as soon as the enlarge is off, I'm going to fly uh, my 30 feet uh, away to the south. Okay. Yeah. You... I'm going to make sure I have line of sight, so above the roof line, so I actually still have line of sight of the building, the target building. Okay. Cool. That's it. All right. Well, Cabal goes around that corner. The wasps see him and start buzzing angrily. Starts growing big. Wasps are coming for you, Cabal. Mm -hmm. There. Eats the red mushroom. Yeah, so there's the three that were outside. They're going to get to you first. Yeah. And they're going to try to sting the piss out of you. Fire. What's your AC? 15. All right, so two hits with one being a crit. Mm -hmm. Does that piss you poison off damage. at all? Piercing and poison. Let's so see. that's 15 points of piercing damage, and I need two constitution, constitution saving throws versus poison. Ooh. Oh, he's going to constitute taste it all right. <laughs> All right, it looks like you failed that first one. Yeah. Ooh. Would it help if you used... Okay, never mind. I can't one moment. You have my bardic. I mean, he can use that on a saving throw, I believe. Oh, actually, yeah, I can use that. It's up to you if you want to. It's a yeah, D8, it's an eight, though. It's an eight, though. You're adding a D8 to it, yeah. so you'd have to basically roll an eight. Uh, you know what? We might well, do it. it doesn't, so hold on. It depends on what's the... Uh... We don't know. It's yeah. it, That's the mystery of it. We do not know what the number he needs to hit is. So basically, he wants to hit an 8. Oh, that's a good roll. All right, so 15 and a 23. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 14 and a 23. All right. So they sting you. You succeed on both saves. So, seven. so you take a half damage on these. Seven plus so this would be 10 points of poison damage after having. Got it. All right. Um, you guys also see kind of buzzing out of the nest five additional wasps. They also run over towards the big target, but they are unable to do anything this turn other than that. So there are eight giant wasps around you, uh, Cabal. <laughs> okay. Just take the wasps. They're angrily buzzing around you, trying to sting you. But uh, only three of them get to the attack rolls. Savannah. God, I wish I had Shatter. <laughs> <laughs> Savannah? Uh, I'm thinking about doing that on my turn. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be back. I could hold off on haste, probably. Um, so Cabal is how far from me if I'm 30 feet above? I'm like wow. 60 feet away from them, right? I mean, if you're 30 feet above... I'm 30 feet above Gary. And Gary's right. roof line. 30 feet so, high. yeah. So let's see. Gary's on the top of that structure, which is about like a 20-foot structure. So I'd 
what's your total at 50? He's, I'm going to say he's like 40 feet away from you. Okay, which wasp looks the angriest? Make perception check. The biggest one. Perception. Oh, okay. Whose stinger is the hardest? No, dude. <laughs> so you do notice that the way that the wasps are like structured, all of their antennae kind of form like like in like a partial V above their eyes. They all look angry as hell. <laughs> that's crazy. Damn, that's crazy. Damn, I wish I had fucking shatter but i don't all right i will <laughs> i don't have haste yet but i will use action surge and shoot four eldritch blasts at one wasp all right roll hit bang r r four right It'd be, yeah, space four, space your attack roll. 420, man. Two hits. Two hits, all right, 12 it is. Yeah, that roll right there kind of narrowed it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, that wasp is badly injured and appears to be near death. Anything else? Um, no, I'll stay exactly 30 feet within Gary, no matter what. Okay. To Darius? No matter what. How many can I hit in a shatter? What's the what size of the shatter? 10 foot radius. All of them. Uh, but you'd have to center it on Cobal, which means he gets hit too. Mm -hmm. He can take it. That's okay. I can take it. <laughs> Are you sure? Yep, do it. Just fucking do it's it. It's only forty-eight. He he he's full. He's probably full it's, near full. It's help. gonna be a third level one. Uh, it's gonna be forty-eight, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you'll survive that. All right, Just let's do it. I have healing potions on me, so it's okay. <laughs> he's enlarged. He has more health. That's fair. All right, I am also That's not rip him. Level three shatter. All right, so con saves. See, <laughs> also need one from Cobal. Yeah. What's the DC? Uh, fourteen. All right, let's say three of them will pass. Uh, oh. Go ahead and roll that thunder damage. Uh, wow. wow. Boo. That was. Holy shit. That's terrible. Wait, did I pass or no? No. No. Okay. <laughs> good news, you didn't take much damage. All right, so <laughs> after that, five of the wasps look to be near death. Two of them are injured. The one that got hit before goes splat. They're all going to go for me. <laughs> what does enlarge do? What's my AC with enlarge after that? Is it plus two? Or is it not? No, that's no, haste. That's, that's haste. That's haste, damn. Okay. You just get an extra D4 for your attacks on with an with enlarge. Ah, I see. Yeah, oh. it, it doesn't actually it, it makes you bigger, so for like grapples and stuff, it's really nice. Yeah, no, I see it. You could grab one and crush it in your hand. Well, why would I do that when I have a because it'd be cool. anything else to Darius? Uh um <laughs> Yeah, so is there a building right next to me? You said there's like yes. this kind of like an alleyway. Uh huh. All right, can I quickly climb up one of these buildings onto the roof? You can uh, do you have a climb speed? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, how much movement speed do you got? Thirty. All right. Well, it's a twenty foot wall, so you can climb up there, get on the roof. Excellent. Um, and yeah, that's it for now. Blessed with these wings and refuses to use them. Shame. That's fair. Oh, nice. Oh, great. What happens on 100 under? <laughs> so you guys see merging from the... Uh, Osmodius. From... <laughs> you wish. Um, from the nest 
a much larger giant wasp. This one was kind of walking on the ground. You know, the wings the folded shaking. back. No, it's not. It's still just a bug. It's not that heavy. Oh, okay. um, but it does appear to be about 30-40% larger than the other wasps. And it's just going to trundle its way over to you, Cabal. Yeah. And it is going to try and just, like, sting you. I bet this one hits harder. This one is sting hit. through you. Yeah. It misses. It oh, definitely it doesn't misses. hit very hard. <laughs> Waldo grabs the stinger with his hands and pushes it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gary? Um, well... I am debating between shattering or hasting. Um, Shatter! Ball. Shatter. Shatter. Yeah, but, but the big one. That's why I'm thinking hasting Cabal might be the best bet, because they're all focused on him, so haste will better him. Um. So yeah, if I'd like to uh, fly a little bit closer, so I'm 30 feet away from uh, Cabal, yell up, sorry, Savannah, and then cast haste on uh, Cabal. Okay, you could do so. Really understandable. So, just so you know, Cabal, you have the haste stuff. I can, make it, I can throw a javelin and start swinging. Yep. <laughs> so, um, and then, yeah, I will move back, um, find somewhere nice and cozy to take cover, and um, curl up with my blanket and start reading. <laughs> All right, go ahead and make a stealth check for your hide. I, I can't actually hide. I don't I don't have action economy. Cost oh! Action to do... Oh, yeah, that's right. I forget you're not a rogue. Yep. I cannot bonus action hide. Yes. All right. Cabal. Yeah. There are eight wasps in melee with you. Five I'm of them. Chuck I'm chucking the flaming javelin at the nest. Okay. This is a attack roll at disadvantage. Disadvantage? If, I'm if there is an enemy in melee with you, all ranged attacks are at disadvantage automatically. But you are hitting a very large target, yeah, so... I'm, I'm basically telling you, you just need to not nat one. <laughs> it's, it's... He will. What is it, K? It's so easy, Cabal. Mm -hmm. Just don't nat... Yes, K-H. Um, they are... K -L. So, 2D1. K-L, sorry, K-L. K-L1. No, K -L. Plus your modifier. 2D20. Two, two you said 2D20. Uh, two D twenty. Yeah, 2D20. Sorry, I missed the 2. And it's... L 2 is no spit. Yeah, that. And then plus my strength. Oh, I'm raged, by the way, as well. Okay. <laughs> Make sure I put that out there. <laughs> All right, yeah, you throw your flaming javelin. It just casts itself into that uh, nest. You begin to see smoke, and you hear the crackling of burning wasp. And, like, wa it. wasp nest. Yeah. All right, and then I'm going to take my... Is my axe also enlarged? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Everything you're wearing and carrying was enlarged with you. I'm going to take out my axe, and I'm just can I, uh, just going to see the bigger wasp, and I'm uh -huh. just going to attack the bigger wasp. I'm going to use reckless attack, because I don't really give a shit. Um, okay, do you have multi-attack? Because you used one attack hasted. for the... Hasted. Okay. Well, that's what I was trying to clarify. Is this your haste attack, or is this... Yeah, it's my haste attack. If you get two attacks per round normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and make your uh, haste attack then. Uh, you have advantage. He does get two attacks per turn. Yeah, yeah, I get two attacks. Okay, well then you would be able to attack him with your second attack and then make your haste attack for a third attack on this round. That oh, javelin okay. throw was one attack. Oh, okay. So I have three attacks. Yeah, it's multi-attack on each action, isn't it? Uh, Haste specifies you only get one attack with the attack. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I forgot okay, about so that. We'll just do my, my weapon attack. Uh, okay. Weapon Which, attack. yep. Two hits. You can do twice. Yeah. So close. Okay, they both hit. Okay. Works. Yeah, I'm going to up uh, Divine Fury. Uh, Reroll. Oh, uh, wait. Re -roll. Yeah. You have advantage. Um, Do that again. You did. Yep, just reroll the same doing? roll. You forgot the 2 for the 2d20 kh1. Uh, <laughs> yep, yeah, you if you just... 2 for the 2 dice iterations, but you didn't put yeah, specify. Yeah, yeah.
No, no. Copy paste. Copy paste. Come on, crits. Crit, crit, crit. Crit fishing. What did you do? I don't know what I did. He he failed to do what we told him. Just copy copy paste. paste. Oh, you, you typed a single Ooh. R. Just copy paste. Select over your message. Okay, there you go. There, there see? All right. Oh, so, thank you. So, two hits, one of which is a crit. And don't you have, like, Brutal Critical or something? I have Great Weapon Master. What does that savage do? Attack. Well, I have Great Weapon Master and I have Savage Attacks. What I think do they do? Savage Attacks is the uh, the one you need to read. Savage Attacks is the... When I score a critical hit with melee, I can I can roll one of the weapon's damage one additional time and add it to the extra damage of the critical hit. Yep. So, four Great damage weapon. rolls, basically. Yeah, yeah so it'd be like, what's the damage roll on that? It's a, Is it a two-handed axe? It's a two-handed axe, so it's a d12. Yeah, so it'd be like 4d12 plus two times whatever your normal damage modifier is, plus 3d4. Damage modifiers uh, this is six, so it's twelve. It's yeah. 12. Yep. And then plus three d four for your enlarge. And then my divine fury is just the one d six. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can add that to each attack, I believe. So I'd just be then two d six. I think it's shame this. Is that count as a? Oh yeah, that's right. Thing? Yeah, you could. So if you do it to both attacks, it'd be four d six. You do you do modify that with critical. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think it's dead. Someone type this for him so he can copy paste. No, I've already got typed. I got typed. I got typed. This. Jesus. Okay. Um, you just annihilate this wasp. It is. It is just a sticky paste on on the cobblestone street. The big wasp. The big wasp. Yeah, he just splatted it. There's a reason I hasted him. Take that, fatty. Take that back, Actually, baby. no, I take that back. He didn't even need the haste to do that. That was his first action. <laughs> oh, yeah, then I have my haste attack, so I'm just going to attack him. Attack him. Oh, that, that was two attacks, so you've used it, your haste attack already. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. threw the javelin, yeah. I threw the javelin, you're right. No, you're good. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Is... Yeah, that was all of your actions. Yep. Yeah. All right. uh, Anything uh, else? Yeah. No, just spit on a wasp near me. <laughs> Adeline? Does it make you queen now? Technically, yes, right? <laughs> Bow down to me. I am the captain. Make a nature check. Oh. Make a nature check. Ooh. Everyone knows it's, if you kill the queen of a beehive. Really you high wisdom. I have faith in this roll. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Get it. Oh, I love it. So you know that wasps, generally speaking, do not operate on, you know, you kill your superior to advance in rank model. They are not Klingons. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, that's it. But good roll. Yeah, good roll. Uh, if you rolled low, I was going to tell you it absolutely works that way. <laughs> Alright, Adeline, what do you do? Um, Well, I was going to attack the big wasp. Uh, you still can. I mean, there's like an antenna left over. How close am I to the nearest wasp to me? Uh, where what was your initial starting position again? Uh, thirty feet above, kind of like in between the two buildings on the where the road is. Ah, okay. The closest wasp is twenty five feet away from you. Let's get in the melee with that. I'll fly down to wherever it, as close as I can to get it and get within melee and attack it. All right. Yep. Yep. This is one of the ones that looks to be near death. I'll attack it twice just because I have two attacks. Okay. Roll to hit. Uh -huh. Those will both hit, including one crit. Brutal, but I think it's always the job done. 
Yep, yeah, you just uh, you cut that wasp in half. Its thorax goes one direction, its head another. Um, I guess I only have five feet of movement left. Uh, I'll, I'll just move five feet towards whatever the next closest wasp is. All right, that puts you in melee with it. Oh, then I will action surge and take two attacks against it. Roll to hit. This one does not appear to be uh, near death. Well, they both hit. And it dies. Sweet. Um, I'll take it. Um, that is my turn. Next. Okay. How many left? There are five wasps left. Four of them appear to be near death. One is injured. I will take attack at... We'll just start with one attack at one of the near-death ones. Okay. What are you attacking? Uh, longbow. All right. Roll to hit. Yeah, I'll that kill hits. That one. I'll kill that one real fast. Yeah, it's dead. And then I'm going to do another one of those guys. All right. Roll to hit. It is very dead. Yep. <laughs> just pinned to a wall. It is just pinned to a wall like somebody's bug collection. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, let's see. There are three wasps remaining. Uh, the one in melee with uh, Adeline is going to try to sting Adeline. I'm in melee with another one? You said you moved five feet. He killed it, I thought. You moved in a minute. Oh, that's right. You did. Cobol. Never mind. So that one's going against Cobol, then. Cobol, what's your AC? 15. 17 with AC. Oh, 17, 17, with AC. 17. So they all miss you. Oh, nice. Uh, Savannah. Um, any near-death ones left? There are two near-death ones. One that is just injured. Oh, if I quit my shield, I'd... Um, can I attack one near-death one and see how it goes, and then attack again after? Yep. Um, Roll it. That hits. It dies. Can I attack the other near-death one? Sure. You miss. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Hello, my turn. Alrighty, to Darius. Uh, is it possible to get one of these to be a pet? It's a wasp. It's a wasp. They're angry. You think that, you know, you might be able to keep it as a pet, as in, like, you know, um, a terrarium or something, um, but it would need to be like the size of a building. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I imagine these wasps are below me. Yes. Okay. The one that's near death, I want to jump down on top of its back. Okay. Make an acrobatics check. <laughs> oh, you're such a fucking It bitch. dodges, and uh, how high up were you dropping down onto this thing from? <laughs> yes. I'm Quite sorry. a bit away. Well, you, 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 you were like 30 feet up, right? Yeah, but I'm a cat, so I land on my feet. We Potentially. You now you need... also can fly. <laughs> yeah, but he was trying to like jump down on this thing pretty fast. I so feline, I'm gonna. I have feline agility. I believe that's just to get extra movement speed, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. 
Can I? Oh, wait a minute. No, uh, let him. Let him. Tenarius, please make a dexterity saving can I throw. Reaction yep. featherfall. I am. Uh, no, too late. Fuck, ah. that's two bad rolls. Yeah, yeah, you you <laughs> land pretty hard. You do like start trying to break, and as a result, you take two points of bludgeoning damage oh, for just the hard it. landing. Yeah, like a hard landing on a cobblestone street. Oh, I thought you we bang were your like, knees. Oh, I thought I was about to fucking die. Nah. <laughs> that been Without fly, that would have been 46. Yeah, fly helps a lot. It was just a matter of you were unable to stop in time because you overshot. Yeah. I'm guessing that's because I jumped off the building. That's my action. Uh, Yeah, that was your action. It, was a, it actually counts as an attack to try to grapple and mount somebody like that. If you have a second attack, you can still take it. Um, actually, uh, College of Swords, hold on, I gotta. I'm not ready for it. Uh, I have to look through this. So oh Alright, Gary? Oh, one left, it sounds like, eh? Two left. Two left. Ah, okay. So what do you do, Gary? Uh, Firebolt. I will just firebolt the uh, the healthier of the two. All right, roll to hit. You hit. It dies. All right. Well, Anything called. else? Use your giant fly swatter on the last one. Yeah. All right, Cobble. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna fly swatter it. Just take the command. Roll to hit. Okay. Hit it with the broadside out of the park. <laughs> yeah, can I? <laughs> you can certainly try. Roll to hit. Okay. Well, I'm going to use reckless attack with this one just to make sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got We're it. all here in combat. A ball's just playing tennis. <laughs> Yep, that hits. Okay. Roll damage. Yeah, an extra D4 for each of those attacks. That was only one attack, I thought. Oh. He has advantage, so. Or add it, add a D4, sorry. I just saw two iterations, so I assumed two. My bad, I didn't look. He was rolling with advantage because of his reckless, so the 22 hits. Okay. And 13 hits. Uh, this was one attack. Roll damage. Oh, okay. It's Add probably going to die. It's probably going to die. Add the probably. You can roll all ones. I'm Don't forget the D4. Fury with it. Of course you are. Of course so D12, D4, D6. Plus 6 to that. Plus that. Plus my plus 2 to that. I think it's dead. Yeah, so you just swing for the fences with your ass and catch it with the flat of it, and you just knock the piss out of this thing, leaking it, leaking like it's um, icker. You just see kind of floating through the air, spinning a bit, like, like it's not moving as it, as it just corkscrews through the air, and it just clips like the top of the wall off in the distance, and you see it kind of bounce off in a couple of different pieces, falling to the ground, because it is very, very dead. <laughs> and you guys are out of initiative. The building has smoke billowing out of it. Uh, I'd like to well, cast we should probably go deal with that. <laughs> we should yep. go deal with that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast pyrotechnics and turn that fire into smoke. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. The smoke just like redoubles. The flame is gone. There's just this giant like, column of smoke rising into the ground. Thick well, black like smoke. Hold my breath and go inside and start beating my wings. What wings? They just last my magic wings. What magic wings? You have magic flight. You don't have wings. I have wings. Peter Pan. I would like to use my wings. Well, then I'll fly really fast in a circle. <laughs> You're trying to superman <laughs> this shit? <laughs> yes. I'm gonna cyclone this from the inside out. <laughs> All right, so Gary's uselessly fluttering around inside of there. 
And then next you go and they start actually doing the work with your wings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it lasts a minute anyways, but yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, you're able to kind of air it out. Revealing a badly damaged, the interior looks like, you know, animals have been like chewing, scoring on it. There's a little bit of remains from the uh, wasp nest. Um, but the building looks sound and relatively undamaged, except for the missing south wall. Can I collect right, I the wasps? With... Get all the stingers. Yep. Yeah. Can I get sure. the glands out of the thoraxes of the one I thwacked against, that pinned against the wall? Sure. Yeah. Did the queen have anything on her? <laughs> not anymore. No, it did not. <laughs> not you you floated. <laughs> You hit they're, so they're also course, insects. They don't. Imploded. They don't typically carry treasure. Hmm. I was expecting like an ultra rare stinger. Like now, under question, mm -hmm. is wasp meat edible? Strictly speaking, yes. It's not very pleasant, though. We have food. I know, but it's nice to have. Keep we we don't we don't need rations. We have then lots of food. Then you're the only okay. one eating wasp meat. <laughs> if if you want to spare us the one ration for you to consume wasp meat, I will note it in my ration tracking. No, it's fine. I was just I was just trying. To if you were to get all of the remains of all of the wasps, that'd be like one rations worth. It wasps do not have a lot of meat on them. That makes sense. We could make all the gooey bits into stew. So, I mean, that was two rounds. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> yeah, I think we have red snail as wasps. So, Cabal, you still got a little bit of enlarge and haste if you wanted to, you know, do something silly. Put a wall up on the south side of the building. Throw me as high as you can, Cabal. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Okay. Build a wall. Good ball. Baseball you, pitches Adeline. Adeline straight up. <laughs> are you going to catch her? Well, I'll fly. It's gobble, the, I can get that'd me. be athletics check. Can it be a strength check for me? That is a strength type check. It's a, it's a strength athletics check. I see. It, I also, enlarge good. gives you an advantage on it. Yep. That's true. Right. That's true. Roll it again. You need to learn. Sorry. I'm 2D20. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Don't be sorry. sorry. Be better. I'm sorry. When sorry. you're using multiple interrounds, doesn't oh, matter. Oh, gross. Adeline goes 10 feet up. <laughs> no, she goes, she goes like 20 feet up. I'm so disappointed. Throw me, throw me, throw me, throw me, throw me. <laughs> me next, me next. <laughs> Maybe I'll throw this one better. Yes. Who, who did you just throw? Um, Me. Savannah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. You 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 chuck her like fifty feet in the air. <laughs> I've never felt like less of a woman than I do right now. Do me. And there's next. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you get them pretty close to like eighty feet up, just, just <laughs> throwing them vertically. Son. Son of a bitch! And then you walk away. Well, the real curiosity is: is does does he get anything uh, bene super beneficial with me being small? <laughs> I mean, he could probably throw me further because I'm lighter. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, he'd there's... be able to throw you further. That's about it. All right. Yeah, you can you can eat me. Oh, yes, <laughs> more people to ye. Inspire him, Tadarius. <laughs> inspire him for the for the halfling throw. <laughs> Bucket, yeah, inspire. <laughs> What's that? A one d four or one d six? Yeah, an additional d four. D six. D six. Tadarius, what's your what's your inspiration? D eight. D eight. Oh, yeah, low five. He's D eight. Yeah. So. What do you mean, no? I said, yep. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he just chucks you like 120 feet into the air. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> this is like midget tossing. It is midget tossing. He's <laughs> larger than all of you. 
I'm fucking three feet dollars. tall. <laughs> we just have the <laughs> Jesus. All right, let's um. Is yeah, there anything let's we could secure this building? Out? Let's scout Sorry. the entirety of the wasp building and secure it. We're gonna make okay. this our base. Yep, that's what I was going for. I was gonna say, can we? Is there anything we scrounge around to make this more defensible against things that go bump in the night? Well, the south wall is gone; like it's missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, how oh. good are you at building walls? Cabal, stack boulders while you're enlarged. Yep, that. Also, yep. Um, no, like palisade, that. like a palisade, not wall, but you know the the the, the spikes out. And and yeah, where I do know. you plan to get the wood from? Well, can that how is, how easily could Cabal remove a wall around. from another structure nearby? Yeah. I mean, from one of the adobe buildings, like to this, just across the street from this, probably pretty easily. From one of the stone structures, significantly harder. I can cut through the stone with my adamantium sword to help him remove the wall. Yeah, but you have to think about the uh, the time span on a large. Yeah. Actually, no, that's not true. Uh, we have multiple iterations, so um, I will drop concentration on haste. And then when Nyx's um, enlarge drops, I'll use my... I have three second levels, so I can cast another three more minutes of enlarge on Cabal. We can sever a wall with our adamantium swords and allow him to move oh, it. He has an adamantium axe. That's why I'm yeah, enlarging him. It's, yeah. it's adamantine. It also grows with him. Oh, yeah. Slice that wall up and replace it onto the, our new building. So are you going for the adobe building like south south across the street from you guys, or are you going for the stone one of the stone buildings to the west? We want stone. Right? Yeah. I think stone. Um, okay. Let's get stone, boys. We might make some friends along the way. Yeah. So yeah, the structure you revealed with the wasp nest is pretty straightforward. It is two rooms two floors so there's a first floor and a second floor there's no like secondary rooms unless the wasps ate through all the interior walls uh but yeah you walk up to this stone uh, structure um you said you have uh adamantine sword you're using to cut at it i have an axe adamantine axe or just a regular one uh, adamantine ah excellent okay go ahead and give me an attack roll then you have advantage And you're enlarged, so... D4. That'll be for the damage. Oh, you're right. That's the damage. 20 to hit the wall. Yeah, yeah. And uh, roll damage on your axe for me. I believe uh, double damage for structures on those. Yes. And you also did not roll that advantage. Still working on putting the 2 in front of the D. You'll get to it eventually. Yeah, eventually, eventually. <laughs> But I don't think a crit really matters for this. One D four. What are you rolling? I don't know. I don't think it does a D twenty in damage. D My bad. I just definitely just slice D twelve. Yep. Yep. I don't. You don't need the two for this one because you only did one attack. No, it's automatic crate with animantium. Oh, you're That's right. Automatic. I apologize. There you go. All right, yeah, you cut out a section of this wall, peeling it away. Inside, you can see on, on this ground wasps. floor here as you do that. Nope, no wasps. Um, You see what appears to be a couple of... Uh, like bedrolls that have been laid out, um, though they look to have been placed there uh, probably, you know, a while ago. But but newer than the ruins. So, well, okay. Well, you get the wall in place. Nix and I will give a look at this yeah. place. Yeah. I'll, leave the wall in place. Um, I'll be the primary locator. Yep. You'll be the. Nope. Yep, investigate. All right. Go ahead and make an investigation check then. 
Uh, are you assisting me? Yep. All right. Out of vantage. I found it. Yeah, actually. As you're looking around, you can see, one, that there are kind of almost uh, gouges and dings in the wooden floor here. Mm -hmm. Um, the like would indicate that there was some type of like conflict, like like these these people were probably sleeping and resting, and then they got ambushed. Any signs of the undead? You've not seen any signs of the undead in the city. Okay. Um, as you're looking about though, under one of the bedrolls, kind of wrapped in leather, is a a tome. Hmm. Uh, is it in a language that I can? What, what language is it in? Written in? Well, I I've got comp language up. Just show it to me. No, oh, yeah. It's Maybe not a concentration. Right. It's just a duration. So yep. that's been less than an hour. So that should still be up. Yeah. yeah. Gary, give the tome to to Gary. Alrighty. Yeah. So it appears to be written in draconic. All right. And it appears to be a spell book. Ooh. Ooh. I begin thumbing through the spell book. All right. Well, let me pull that up. I still have four levels worth of spell scribing material on me. Plane shift. <laughs> Wish. Transport ourselves <laughs> to a different campaign for the hell of it. <laughs> so back to Zerial. <laughs> we go back and you meet six adventurers. <laughs> we didn't, we only got through like one level of hell. Well, that particular uh, campaign is called the Descent into Avernus. We descended into Avernus. Completed the campaign. What you gonna learn? Yeah, so as you're thumbing through it, uh, these are the spells uh, that you find that are actually usable. The book is somewhat damaged and decayed. Alright, um, can I cast Mending on it to uh, prevent any further damage? Uh, mending repairs damage, it does not prevent it. Okay. And it only oh, repairs yeah. like a tear. Like it, oh. it, it it doesn't like undo like rusting yeah, yeah, or that's... molding or things. Yeah, I was basically trying to repair um the uh, the, the spine, anything like that, so that the uh, book is somewhat safer to use without worrying about further damage. That's what I meant. You get you know, kind of as you're thumbing through it, you think that if you were you that's not necessary, that if you were just to not, you know, dunk it in water or fire or something, it'll be fine for the foreseeable future. It's, this is more like it's been left in a jungle environment for a couple of months, so some of the pages have kind of molded away to, out of their usefulness. All right. Well, I have some choices to make. Because gentle repose is obviously super useful. If I can hop, I should be able to. Yeah. Raven Fieldman's good. Yeah, but I only have four uh, four levels worth of spell components to uh, or spell scribing material. I didn't bring any more because I've used a lot of it to copy um, uh, the Tiefling's book. See. So, but anyway, yeah, I will uh, throw that in my notes and uh, pick later. But yeah, I will add that to my inventory. Does it have a title on the cover? It does not. Ooh, a pretty picture then. Nope. Blank. Blank book. I mean, it's, yeah, it's like it's like a spell book like you would find in a city to buy. Just pretty generic, blank spell book. No, there were no notes in the front. It looks like they were just using this to write uh, spells in. Okay. What what class are you again? Um, wizard. Okay. You would know, Illusionist. yeah, you would know as a wizard, that um, it is not altogether unusual for wizards to have multiple spell books. Yep. So, you think that this might not have been their primary one, which is probably why okay. it was left behind. Alright. Okay. And that was, that was all we found in there, other than like the, the signs of fighting? 
Yes. Okay. All right. How how's it going with Cabal's construction company? Yeah, I mean, some time passes. You're able to build like a like pile up the rubble to make a uh, a rough wall, like a a rough stone wall on the first floor. Uh, because of the right. resting angle that you would need to use for the irregularly shaped rubble, um, getting up to the second floor would be a significant undertaking. You you would not have time to do that. Yeah, yeah, just going for first floor coverage. All right, not uh, probably took all of my uh, time that I had casting enlarge on him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I would love to take a long rest. As would I? Why did it say at eight? All right. So, I'm assuming uh, Selena is met back up with us. Uh... Yeah. Okay. How did the reinforcement well, go? I missed it. On far as the building. Uh, we managed to uh, secure the first floor with uh, encampment style. Uh, you know, piling the walls up in front of each other to a point where we can get in and out of uh, you know an opening somewhere, but we weren't able to secure the second floor. Oh, okay. But yeah, we have a first floor that's secure and um, obscure, essentially. Does it's it look first... somewhat natural? No. Does it, I mean, like, out of place compared to the rest of the structures around? Yeah. It's okay, perfect. On a, on a Adobe building. You, you stacked up, like, you took rubble, and you basically stacked up rubble to, like, enclose that first wall, and it looks like it. Like, like, if, the... like if, if you were like to overfly this, it would look like someone like took like sandbags. Like it's, it stands out like that <laughs> to okay. build a wall. Looks like rubble on rubble. Okay, it looks like rubble. This is obviously not a natural way rubble would fall. <laughs> well, then uh, maybe we uh, stack rocks. Pitching... No mud. Maybe we stack rocks to make it look like it's just natural rubble, right? No, mud and clay. Make it look like the second floor crumbled down, and we stack rubble, and like... It's then not like... a building that produces that kind of rubble. We need to use mud and clay, because that is the primary structure of the building. Oh, it's an adobe fucking structure yes. that we put a stone wall on? Yes, yes, we put stone wall for structure for ourselves, for, you know, defensible positions. Yeah, gather, gather clay and smear it everywhere. Just fucking... Yep. Yeah. Mask it. Yeah, because we should still have, you know, like an hour or two or so before, uh, um, we need to long rest and we're out of fly. So we should be able to fly over to the, uh, where's that, uh, mappity map? Yeah, we flew, flew over to the, uh, western or eastern edge of the city and, uh, like into the jungle there and got some mud and stuff from there. We should be, with all of us, be able to relatively easily kind of paint the wall, so to speak. Finger paint, yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. So uh, could I uh, guide the party in their ability to uh, make things not so pretty? Sure. So, yeah, you start kind of directing the party. That you're, you know, running like a... Uh, Camouflage. Like a bucket brigade, but for mud out of the jungle. And uh, go ahead, I would say, and make a stealth check to see just how well you're able to camouflage this wall to look like, you know, not entirely artificial. You know, it doesn't it doesn't look like it was part of the original structure, but it also doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. You, you get like it wouldn't stand up to close inspection. But, you know, someone okay. flying overhead wouldn't immediately, like, zo zone in on that and be like, well, well, that's fucking weird. Perfect. All right. Well, that pretty much concludes our adventuring day, I think. So you guys are just going to haul up the first floor of this building? Yep. Okay. Secure and watch. I'm assuming who wants to go first. Oh, I guess I will. Second. All right. Third. Type it. Thirst. <laughs> Thirst. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll fuck off. 
first, second, third. Did we do this by best passives? Yeah. I, have a ship, I have a ship passive, so if anyone else wants to... I got I'll, put Ted on. I'll put Ted on third and Cabal on fourth. Yeah. yeah. I have 12, so... It's better than Ted. Is it better than them? Yeah. I have an 11, so... Yeah. Alright, there you go, Wonder. Okay. So yeah, you guys uh, go to sleep. Throughout the night, on your various watches, you do hear off in the distance the sound of a large creature stomping through parts of the city. An occasional roar off in the distance. Yeah. But other than that, the night passes uneventfully, and morning comes with you guys having completed a long rest. Woohoo! Spell slots! I had you one first no level longer spell have slot. fly. Yep. I had one first level spell slot left. <laughs> I wake up in the morning and I try to fly. We probably would. <laughs> it's been <laughs> 10 days. <laughs> I'm so used to flying that I just yeah. wake up. Like when, when we all up. wake up to go to the bathroom and stuff, we start to fly and just jump a little bit and face plant. <laughs> <laughs> Later, nerds. I'm I'm back to being special. <laughs> I slap the fairy. I uh. You can, you can attempt to I slap the fairy. On, I, I cast reduce on fairy. <laughs> You're a pixie now. <laughs> I mean, I fuck with dudes, but I know fairy. <laughs> Calm down, Tinkerbell. Anyway, uh, what are we doing now? T Rex. We are exploring. I'm no. We'll leave him be. We don't need any fuck with him. Okay. I'll let you guys see. In, in our exploration, well, fuck. I think we go to we the central. We probably could. <laughs> where, where the fuck I are we gonna find this crown at, though? That's what we. It's not a crown. It's a chalice. But where I bet, yeah, in, the fuck are we where, gonna find where, this where, chalice at? One well, would think it would be in the central ruin of where we are, the center of the citadel. In the water. No, in no. the center building. But oh, with so everything no. being looted, if it is here, it's probably by the T-Rex, because no one's going to fuck with the T-Rex. No, I think we should explore uh, where we're at. To All the right. cereal bowl? To the cereal, cereal bowl. To the cereal bowl, so let's head west. Okay. So yeah, you guys walk through the... Uh rubble-strewn streets approaching the central cylindrical spire. <laughs> and you can see that it looks like it has various entrances at, like, street level that you could walk into. The, uh... You, you, some of you guys have dark vision, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that the uh inside of the structure is mostly like a uh, like a colonnade. And there's like a central like large spiraling stone staircase heading up. And away we go. At various points, as you kind of look up, you can see that uh, the pillars appear to have, like, square holes in them, which you would expect at one point to have held timbers. And so you think, like, the interior structure of this place might have been made of wood, though it's no longer there. Mm, how do we plug it? I can relate. It's hard for me to find wood around myself anymore. Is it my ED? Do you have an eating disorder? We, wait, we're up near the northwest area, are we? No, no, we're in the very east. Oh, we're in that giant, giant. Bowl. The citadel, the circle on yeah, the east. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, cereal bowl. bowl. Yeah, as you walk through this uh, colonnade, you know, little bits of ruins, almost like a mossy, dirt-like floor covered in the remain like rotted remains of wood. You know, there's an occasional snake and the like picking its way through it. 
on the ceiling, you can make out the shapes of many bats just perching from the ceiling. Fuck those bats. <clears throat> As you guys ascend, you know, it eventually um, brings you to the top where it's again like a, a half ruined tower. The ground is covered in vines. There is no evidence of anything um, still like remaining besides the walls and like the floor. No fun. Wait, so no one landed in the temple in the lava? I did. I went to it. I didn't go in it. That's probably yeah. where the fucking chalice is, but we'll check this place first. Well, we I think we just did. Well, if you were here last week, don't yell maybe at you could have suggested it then. Don't yell at me. It's either behind the T-Rex or in the lava pool or in the Citadel. So we have three choices. Well, it's a big ass city. It can literally be anywhere. In a random house? Could be. We don't well, know. It could be. There was a cave as well. There was a cave, yes. Where'd the cave go? I fucking... Where's it on the it was at the, It was along the north wall. Yeah, I'm looking. There she is. Yeah. There's, there was two entrances, right? You saw two, yes. One of which has a obelisk in front of it. That's right. Write that so, down, write that down. Is that, is that on the boulevard? Uh, the middle... The, like... The rightmost boulevard that is partially going through the water. Yeah. At the north end of that is the entrance to one of the uh, caves, and then to the left of that, between the two boulevards, is another. Mm, I see. Okay. Okay. So Death, cave. Death, my next guess. Cave. Cave. T Rex. Lava pool. Citadel. Okay. Oh, very discreet. Well, I'd say this place sounds like a bust. Should we uh, go swimming? To the caves! To the cave. Well, before we go to cave, do we want to go check out... Do we want to go in... How do we... Because all the temples, they all had slime in the front of them, if I remember correctly. What if we send to Darius with invisibility and the most stealthiest person we can find to the T-Rex? Also me. I'm pretty, I'm pretty stealthy, honestly. What's your stealth, to Darius? Plus I, have a, I have a plus five. I can take my plate off. Oh, you're going to die for sure. What's your stealth, to Darius? Plus six. Yeah, oh, I have okay. a plus five. I mean... We send we send those two to the T Rex invisible and just look around. Okay. Y'all forget who I am. Yeah, he's a rogue wizard. He's okay. A wizard. He's not a rogue. So sorry. So you're sending Gary and who invisible? I think Ted would be the next highest roll. It would be me. Okay. And you guys are approaching the. So you guys are walking through the town to the amphitheater? Do I understand that correctly? So, with that, if that's the case, I'd say the rest of the party go to the market hall, which is just to the southeast, right along the boulevard there, right? That's the, the arched red top building right to the east of the boulevard. Under... Okay, yeah. Yeah, would the rest of the party, if if they were to go in there invisible and go into the amphitheater, the rest of you guys want to go to the marketplace and check that out? I want to go to the cave. That's sure on the, the way. Cave. This is on, all this is on the way to the cave. I've made my feelings clear. Okay, it's on the way. So I would like to stay to like within proximity of the invisible people, just in case. Yeah, yeah I yeah. say we like 
observe the they, invisible people from a distance, yeah. and then if need yeah. be, we can kind of jump in and help them. Then we just okay. fight the T-Rex if they get caught. Then we just fight the T-Rex. Okay. I mean, twenty hours. Or even we like, just... or even, or even someone distracts the T Rex while they go and then look for, look around while whoever the fastest of us is. Nix. Yeah, can I was fly. gonna say I, I can probably be the one to distract it. He can well, fly. We, we can stack fly and haste because fly even... gives you sixty feet of fly speed and haste doubles that, so you'd have one hundred and twenty feet of movement without dashing. But two people would have to cast that. Yeah, but I also have fly 30 feet with casting nothing. Yes, but fly casted is faster. That's what I'm getting at. But I, I, just, I, feel, I think right. Nyx can safely distract the T-Rex the without yeah. needing any spells, and then what I'm he just pulls the T-Rex away a little bit, and then you guys uh, sneak in. No, the T-Rex just... pulls out a crossbow or some shit. <laughs> it, it could pull out like a child's crossbow well, with his tiny those arms. Those fucking arms, dude. Couldn't even load the damn thing. Under, does dude, it have opposable? Thumbs? We have a spider with a crossbow on its back in our other campaign. Anything is possible. Yeah, but you did that. <laughs> you, I you vote. Think this is a wild T Rex that's stuck down here? I vote. Yes, there's lots of dinosaur, wild dinosaurs. I vote Nyx distracts because it doesn't matter if he dies anyway. And then. Distract if necessary. It's They're invisible. Yeah. Only if necessary. Well, let's get to the market first. That'll be then. Then under can you know start progressing stuff on his end. So we're all heading to the market as a group. Okay. Next question is: What path are you taking to get there? Least resistance. South, and then yeah, we we had a good fly over the city, so I would probably lean towards that southern one. Uh, yeah. South and then west and then north, or uh, is that too torrent of water there? The water is the, the water is near the lava. It's actually quite rapid. Um, if you wanted the path of least resistance, you could probably ford the water going out the west side of the ring wall. So there's a gap there, and just kind of ford the water there to that, and then get to that middle boulevard and take that north. That would be your okay. easiest path out of here. Yeah. Well, just. Everybody as be on as high as alert, because fording means we'll be way steep. As cool. long as At there's least. no alligators, I don't care. No. Okay. We're in the jungle, so there are no alligators. Or piranhas. Right. Anyway, um, so yeah, you guys start uh, fording the river. Or not river, the uh, kind of swampy water. <laughs> You see some, you know, there's like mosquitoes, some small wasps, some snakes. Nothing out of the ordinary for a jungle. You eventually could cross. There's a couple of ruined houses. Get on the boulevard and start walking north. Are we going on the second clearing to the north? The second clearing towards the amphitheater? You are the heading for the market arched roof building. Is what you told yeah. me. Yep. The middle is that the middle red one between the boulevards? Yeah. Or the no. Right one? Yes. The one on the right. right is the is the market stalls. The one on the left, as you would walk by, would be um, you, know, you can see carvings of monkeys hanging by their tails, decorating two cracked obelisks that stand before a shrine enclosed by broken walls. Past the obelisks is a courtyard filled with horse tails and arum lilies, and five archways open into darkness at the base That's of the ruin. Mounted above the central arch is a stone plaque bearing a cuneiform inscription. And that's that's the uh, place between the two boulevards that you would pass on your way towards the market stalls. Hmm. And right. then, you know, as you walk past that, like just as you're getting past that, you would see on your right, that was on your left, on your right, you would see a derelict market hall standing on the street corner. Frayed cloth awnings hang in tatters above above a broad alley lined with stalls. Is that the section just south of the west cave? East cave. East cave, okay. I'll take anything that's tattered. Hang on. To be clear... The market stalls are at M, 
the shrine is at S. And we're headed to M. Okay. Or sorry, to, yeah. actually, I put the S in the wrong spot. The S is north of that, slightly. Uh, anyway. Yeah, you're heading to M, is what you told me. Perfect. Interesting city design with the roads. It would definitely help with flooding. Mm -hmm. But also based on a layout, definitely a walking society. And what are what are we hoping to find in the marketplace? The chalice? Uh, I think it was just to move the story along, heading that yeah. way. We wanted to go to the north of the city. The market was the uh, easiest and safest choice to get to, so that we're close to both destinations we want to go to. Okay. Should we just check the shrine out then, since we're here anyway? I, if I remember, oh, that one doesn't have the slime, does it? Under. I said it, I did not mention slime. I said it had a couple of obelisks and a wall. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just I remember a bunch of the other shrines had them. I was just trying to remember. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just letting you know. Uh, slime was not like a standard feature of all of them. Okay. Okay. This is the guys... shrine from the air. What do you guys think about checking the shrine out? Sure. I'm always down to go shrining. Yep. Okay. All right, so you're not going into the market stalls. You're going to the shrine. Do we think yeah. there's anything worth checking out in the market stalls? It... No. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, why okay. to the shrine? Yeah, we were heading north down that central boulevard, and we decided to go west when we came to that flight of stairs instead of going all the way to the market. All right. Yeah. Monkey tails. Is it this one, right? Yeah. Well, we'll uh, pop a comp language as soon as we see the uh, shrine, because I know I'm going to need it. Yeah. Yeah. You can. You know that would tell you that the cuneiform above the uh, shrine reads "Better to be Wango's friend." Than his enemy. I do. And you said there is monkeys all over this one. Wongo was the monkey. Tail. There are carvings of monkeys hanging by their tails that decorate the two cracked obelisks that stand in front of the shrine. Past the obelisks is a courtyard filled with horse tails and orum lilies, and five archways open into darkness at the base of the ruin. Mounted above that central arch is the stone plaque bearing that inscription. As you guys get closer, you can realize that uh, there are markings in the floor of the four pathways north um, that aren't the central corridor. Cause there's five corridors. Um, you know, three like large round depressions in the floor in each one. Okay. We have the bard start singing a song called I Love Wongo before we walk in. His name is Wongo. He plays the bongo. There he is. Keep going. You're muted. Oh, baby. We need a good Wongo song from you. Alright, let's do it. Um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little banjo. What are you guys thinking? Yep, exactly. I'll play, uh, play a little Wongo. A Wongo song. Well, while he does that, Nix and I will start investigating, uh, the, uh, structures, the arches, all that stuff inside the courtyard. Yeah. So as you guys walk past, like between these two obelisks, you guys hear in your heads a cacophony of shrieking monkey sounds. Not again. You know, as you like walk out from between the two obelisks, the sound fades. So just when you're standing between them. Yes. Is that your performance okay. check? Yes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, he's very good with the banjo. <laughs> oh no! All right, that's my investigation check. 
All right, yeah, as you're looking down each of these, um, you guys have dark vision, right? Because there's no light in there. What's your What's your range of your dark vision? Sixty. Okay, stand by. Up the map. Nix, do you have dark vision? Hmm? Do you have dark vision, Nix? I have, I have a spell called dark vision, but no. Do you, do you have dark vision? Okay, then I you know. and I both are not able to see down these. Yep. Neither of us that are doing the investigation and helping with it are dark vision under dark. Okay. Well, then you don't see anything. Very well. Okay. That's why I was clarifying, because yes, people in the party do have dark vision. But not the ones doing the investigation. Yeah. Tadarius, uh, can you cast light as a cantrip, as a bard? Yes. He's not going to. I fucking hope he can. Well, I can cast torch. Jake. Jake. Also cast torch. What? Do you have the light cantrip? The answer is yes. No. You should. Oh my god, you, why not? How not? Because, because I he has dark vision, ward, so... I did Blade Ward, Minor Illusion, Thunderclap. Mm -hmm. Those are all mm -hmm. leveled spells. What are your cantrips? Those are my cantrips. Minor Illusion is not as a cantrip. Yeah, it's a cantrip. Blade uh, Ward is yeah, a cantrip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, most people don't if they have light, you know, dark vision on their character. My, my, can I send my steel defender in? He does have dark vision. Well, I wouldn't recommend sending him in because it'll probably initiate something. But your if, uh... steel defender, can it actually talk to you? It we can also just call speak. over one of the party members with dark vision. Yeah, we'll just do that. It's dumber. This can't speak. Yeah, can we yeah. all just head in inside the office? No, we're... Guys... I mean, you just look well, down every, the... Everybody's in the sports. courtyard. Yeah. Nix and I are looking around. <laughs> I say we each, take an, we each take an opening and just head inside. Why would you split the party? That is always, like, rule number one, never do. He's saying we all go in one area. Yes. So are you guys just currently looking down the various corridors? Do I understand that correctly? Those all lead yes. to the same place, though, right? From yeah. the outside, is what I'm asking. Yes. Yeah. Nobody has okay. entered the building. Great. So, as you look down the various corridors, the outer two... Look to go 10, 20, 30, 40 feet, turning to the right or to the left. The middle two uh, look to go 25 feet in, ending in like an alcove in which you can see what appears to be a molding of like a, almost like a like a face in the in the wall back there. The central corridor, you can tell, looks to go about 60 feet in. And about 40 feet of that, after 40 feet of that, you can see that a 10-foot statue of an evil-looking monkey is balanced on its tail atop a stone dais. That's Bongo. The statue's limbs are splayed with hands and feet cupped. You can tell that the wall opposite like behind the statue there is a sculpted relief though from your current position the relief is unreadable due to the distance and the fact there's a giant monkey statue between you so well, avoid the middle for now right can have um i mean it'll be 10 minutes and a little bit of gold but I'll uh, spend 10 minutes in Ritual Cast uh, Find Familiar. Okay. Good Summing mark off. Peaches. Mm -hmm. Shows yep. up. Mark He's off. got another can of peaches. Always. Always. It's it's funny because like, every time he appears, the can has like different like branding and logos on it. Like He's stealing it from like random places. 
Naturally. I wouldn't have any other imp in my party. Well, I'll, uh, I'll ask him if he wants to go uh, try reading that dais behind the giant monkey. See how he feels about that. Sorry, say again? I'll see if he'll uh, fly in there and read the uh, inscription behind the giant monkey that we can just barely make out. Yeah, sure. And he just starts flying down there. Lands, like, on the head of the monkey statue. Turns around. Comes flying back. Yeah, so, uh... It, it looks like there's, like, an image of, like, a monkey-like creature tearing into a giant serpent on the wall behind the statue. There's some type of inscription that are carved uh, above and below the relief, but I can't read them. I don't know what they say. Um, Otherwise, in that chamber, like, on the walls, there's, like, four masks of painted stone, uh, a lion, a zebra, a boar, and a vulture. Well, if you want to fly down there again, I can uh, trust you with my eyes. Keep eh. my head this time. Yeah, I got nothing else going on. You start flying down there, perches on the statue. Yep. All right, I'll sacrifice my vision to see through his eyes. Yeah. What does comfort language read? So, on... Of course, they don't put that anywhere near that description. Give me a second. Naturally, it's like four pages away. <laughs> yeah, it's more, more like this hit in the middle of a, like two paragraphs away. It says, Wango's friend knows where to pour the water. Ah, okay. And then uh, when uh, Peaches looks around in here, since he's sitting on top of the monkey, I'll uh, suggest it to him in his uh, cute little head. Can I get a good sweep of the inside from the perch on top of the monkey? Absolutely. And you also realize that there are inscriptions above each of those stone masks set into the wall. Above the lion mask, it reads, oh. I ate one of the boar's friends. Above the boar mask, it reads, the vulture is lucky to be alive. Above the zebra mask, it reads, my only friend is starved to death. And above the vulture mask, it reads, one of the others has no friends. All right. Um, right. I'm, I'm hoping you're going to type that out. If I must. I appreciate it. Yeah, I try to put it together, but it's a lot. Yeah. Vulture starved to death. Yeah, but the one that they're associated with is important as well. Huh. All right, I got it in my notes. Yep. So it looks like the lion has no friends. The zebra is friends with the boar. And the boar is friends with the vulture. Who did but the lion vulture eat? Is... Lion ate the zebra. Yeah. Why is that just like my, my? Why is the vulture lucky to be alive? Because the boar's friends with both the zebra and the vulture, and the lion ate the zebra. The vulture is lucky to be alive. That's that's just my my surface read on that. Now, who starved okay. to death? Um, and then also the uh, the layout of the room too. Under if you uh, it says Peach just scanned it. I'd yeah. say it's probably safe for us to enter. Yeah, okay. Are we all just going down the middle? Um, 
Yeah, Peaches was able to enter. I mean, he was flying. So, yeah, I guess we'll uh, look for traps as we go. But otherwise, yeah, just enter. It is just a shrine. No, go so. ahead and make an investigation check as you check for traps entering. Nix. Yep, I'm doing it. No help? Better. We'll help, yeah. I'm helping, yeah. All right, I'll thank Peaches, and uh, he can he can hang out if he wants. I'm sure he loves watching humans solve puzzles. Yeah, he's sitting there on top of the statue, eating his uh, peaches. Web brand. That's the investigations. Oh yeah, I forgot that he costs extra. I always forget about that. Okay. Freaking no sweet tooth cost me 15 gold to summon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm assuming no traps. He didn't say anything. You did not find any traps as you walked down the corridor and into the okay, statue. I was, I was scared. I was like, and you should all roll 4d6 and then do it again <laughs> five times. No, he rolls the damage. We just roll the death saves. No, I was saying rolling new characters. <laughs> oh. Nah, he wouldn't insta give us with the monkey. It'll probably be the serpent. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, and then, uh, what was the... Uh, only uh, Watto's friend knows where to pour the water. Is there any vessels in here that look like somewhere you would pour water? The only thing that you would see is a, like a receptacle for water at all. Um... Be that its hands are cupped together. Ah, uh, okay. So each hand signifies one of the animals. Is one of the anim is one of the animals' mouths open? Their masks. But... Technically, all of their mouths are open. Mm -hmm. Also, the eyes are open because they're masks. And maybe a couple of the noses. Nope, just the eyes and the mouth. Ah. So Central African, then. I mean, that's the vibe I'm getting from the riddle. Ate one of the boar's friends. Okay, so the lion ate... Yeah, one of the others has no friends. That's the lion. So yeah, if you, if you follow this... Let me type it out. I mean, it's got to be the lion that has no friends, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you read that in combination with, can you guys, uh, or Dylan, could you delete both of those so it's a little smaller? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Much as I love a good peach getting smacked. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, if you read those together, the lion has no friends, he ate the zebra, the boar is friends with the zebra, and the vulture, all of those are true statements then. Doesn't answer the question of where to pour the water, though. Well, the... What does the uh, inscription specify? Only Watto's friends know where it to pour the water? It says Wongo's friend knows oh, where Wongo. to pour the water. Wongo's friend knows where to pour the water. And there's only one set of hands or one for each mask? There, so it's, it's like a, uh, it's a monkey, so there's like a cupped left hand, a cupped right hand, a cupped left foot, and a cupped right foot. All, uh -huh. any of them, or all of them could receive water. Ah. Uh. Okay. If we pour it in, if we pour water in all the cups, we'll get the right one. Yes, we'll also get three wrong ones. But it doesn't say anything about not knowing where to pour the water. Yeah, but it says you do. <sighs> okay. Are the hands associated with anything in the room, or are they kind of just displayed out in uh, they general... Just, uh, they just appear to displayed out. 
it, it's not like it's indicating any any one statue yeah, or yes. any one mask or anything. Yeah, so it's kind of just a, a pose, the legs splayed out straight, kind of. Mm -hmm. All right. Where are you scrolling, Nix? Who the fuck is this monkey's friend? Well, um... Is this just a math problem? Like, do we just substitute... Lion, boar, zebra, and vulture for A, B, C, D, and like fucking solve for X. I'm no. thinking it's, it's monkey's gotta, left hand. It's gotta be the zebra, right? Monkey's paw. Like, Devil who monkey. Started, monkey's who paw. Who started it? Who was it? Monkey's paw is left hand. Bongo. So this is just what I feel like. I feel like. The zebra is the vulture's friend, so somehow the vulture starved to death. The boar is the zebra's friend, so the boar is mad that the vulture lived and the zebra didn't. So the boar is like, the vulture is lucky to be alive. And the lion's just an asshole. Okay, and then the, uh, the, the glyph on the wall was a monkey fighting a snake, so that's Mo and Wongo, correct? Yes. Based on the the story you would think so yes and then also here is the um i don't know if it'll let me post this in here might be too long yeah message is too long yeah i just put those up into four into like many paragraphs for a reason So that's the story that um, uh, Bob relayed to us that he heard when he was, you know, back a thousand years ago when he was being created or whatever, you know, when he was getting all of his information uploaded into him. That was one of the stories, and this is relating to the nine trickster gods. Is Zorbo supposed to be Zebra? No. We go no. Back. So if you, uh, uh, let me let me repost that image as well. I gotta. Yeah, thank I you. Don't have that. I, was... I don't have that one saved. I'm grabbing it right now. It was in... There it is. Copy. Paste. Beat me by a second. Someone delete it. Yeah. So those are the nine trickster gods. That's what the story is about. So Jin is a rabbit. Um, Kabazan is a tentacle monster. Moa is a snake. Nan Nan Nang Nang is a um frog frog toad, toad person Mayor, yeah no they're Ibis is this or mm. Ilbis and then is she a lioness or a cat lion yeah some sort of lion with tentacles and then snail boy and then Wongo. Yeah. The lion is actually a um commodon is what they're called. It says in the riddle. Like mm. all of them have their name and then the and what they are. At some yeah. point in the riddle, in the uh story. Mm -hmm. But I don't think these uh silhouettes are relating to the um the riddle with the lion. No, they're not. I was looking. Yeah, I was just I was just updating because I know Adeline and uh, Savannah weren't here when we got all of this info dump, and they're technically our two primary note takers, so they should have all of this. Mm -hmm. Wait, is this here? A Sioux monster broke into Ubtau's palace and stole a pail of water for the Omuans. Omuans. When the god came running to find it, the Sioux monster hid the pail in a Jaculis. Is Jaculi one of these things? No. Jaculi. Jaculi. Jaculi's burrow. That implies that it's a rabbit. It would be, well, that was Moa. Moa. Moa the Jaculi. Yeah. That's the snake, then.
Vulture is the lion eats the zebra. The others has no friends, so the lion has. Did the monkey is the statue of the monkey's mouth open? No. No. We do or do not think that this Wongo riddle with the riddle with the lion, boar, zebra, and vulture is related to the. Tale of Uptow. So, that's up to I you. mean, they're probably tied together. Go ahead, Under. Sorry. I simply said that that's up to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm just asking the group do we think that these two are related or do we think I think they're tied together, but I don't think they're directly related. Mm -hmm. Obviously, where to pour the water is based on something probably from the story. But the riddle doesn't answer like the the riddle doesn't answer much. Is he can like by a master? No. So how how that's do we, an El Mirage. How do we know where to pour the water? That's what we're trying to figure out. Yeah, it goes in one of his hands more than likely. Do you think the water goes to the friend that starved to death? The zebra's friend that starved to death? The, the hands don't, uh, don't... He was saying... Yeah, the, the hands, hands don't associate move. with anything, so it's... That's where the, the bit of the puzzle is coming into... Um, into play for the thinking side of things. All the hands look the same? Well, one's a left hand, one's a right hand. Then there's the cupped left foot and the cupped right foot. They do have the opposable digits, so you can tell that they aren't, you know, exact copies. <sighs> but there does not appear to be like, you know, it's not like one's all jeweled up and the other is plain stone or anything like that. Do any never mind. Nate, what do you think? Where do you think we should pour the water, Nate? Uh yeah. I think that my what, what? Paw, left hand. Okay, let's do the opposite of that. <laughs> so right foot? Yeah. Alright. So you're pouring water into the right foot? Uh, not not entirely yet. Gary, what do you think? You guys gotta solve some puzzles without me. No, okay. I say I will be the everyone else back out. I'll pour the water in the right foot. Right, but if I die, I can just be revived. I don't need a material component. So, does anyone know revivify? No, we're fifth no. level. Exactly. Oh, then we're level right. five characters. What the fuck is a Zorbo? It it is a um, an ugly koala. Here. Yeah, <laughs> a particularly mean-looking, long-haired, ugly koala. I'm uh, typing it all up. I just uh, forgot to add the uh, um, creature types with each of them. The Zorbo and the Al Mirage became enemies. I don't think I need to describe the snail for you guys. Hopefully that uh, that helps. Actually, just to be safe. Oh, and I forgot to capitalize monkey, so there you go. Just to be safe, the flail snail is the snail-shaped one. Do 
Did you say Wonko's the monkey? What the fuck are you talking about? The Sioux monster. He's a monkey. Yeah. yeah. A Sioux monster is a type of monkey. Yeah. It is more. Yeah. It is similar in shape, more closer to like a. A um, I don't know what's called it a lemon rust. Uh, like a like a smaller lankier chimpanzee. With really weird arms. Like a lemur. Nope, not a lemur. I'm thinking of something else. There's a type of monkey that it begins with the L. Well, the only thing... Lemur? So here's here's what I feel like I can think of right now. It says that the Commodon is a lion. A lion is one of the nine trickster gods. Wongo is a monkey, who is also one of the nine trickster gods. There's not a vulture or a zebra or a boar trickster god. Yeah, I might be overthinking it. But how do they relate to the hands? Because they don't. There's no correlation to the hands to the masks. Are the masks on those curved outcroppings? They're carved into them. Oh, okay. Well, then we oh, need to go so down is... each of those halls and pour water in those spots. I bet it's nothing to do with the hands. Yeah, we definitely need to go down each of the hallways. Can we? All yeah, right. can we back out and go back down? Just I guess start from left to right and go down each of the other hallway things. I don't know. Let's which find is, out. which is the lion? Which of those four pedestals is the lion? Uh the sorry, flipped away from the map. Give me a second. The lion is the on the west wall. All right. Well, can we can we back out and just check each of the? Yeah, let's go down the westernmost corridor. Um, okay. Nix and I will check for traps just in case. I don't think there'll be any, but better sure. safe than dumb. Make an investigation check as you walk down that westernmost corridor. Yeah, you uh, walk down and don't find any traps. It turns to the right, ending in a that stone curved alcove. The negative of the mask um, kind of carved into the wall from this side. No, no, like, basin to catch water? No basin to catch water. Nothing that looks like it would be connecting it to one of the hands or feet? How large is the mask? Yeah, like, medium creature head-sized. Um, somebody tell enough to put their face up to it. I can, I'll do it. I'll fly it. Alright. So you look through the mask's eyes. Mm -hmm. And when you look through it, you, you know, you're looking into the statue room. You see the statue, except there is a ray of blue light falling from the ceiling onto the right hand of the statue. All right, right hand. Well, let's just check the other three corridors just to be safe. Yeah, but... exactly. All right. But we're, right, as of right now, we know that lion equals left hand. All right. Right hand. Right hand? Right hand. Right hand. The statue's right hand is where the light was. Okay. So the oh, yeah. so the next corridor over to the so that would be the mast to the southwest is the boar. All right, come all stick your face up there. Oh, you may actually. Yes. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. All right, yeah, you look through the negative of the boar mask. You see the statue, a ray of blue light falling on the left foot of the statue. Okay. Um, interesting. Uh, it points, yeah. All right, on to the next one. All right, yep, this would be the southeast one. This is the zebra mask. Sedarius, poke your eyes up there. Uh, I'm just waiting for one of these things to blow up. Yep. All right, Sedarius, are you, are you looking through, look it? through the mask? Sure. All right, you look through the mask. You see the statue, an array of blue light falling onto the statue's right foot. Which animal is this? The zebra. zebra. Right. 
and then obviously the vulture is the yeah but we uh, should still look so move around to the last mask in savannah adelina if you adeline if you want to look through it so this is the east corridor and it looks into the vulture mask who's looking into it savannah all right so Savannah, you look through the Vulture Mask's eyes, you see the statue and a ray of blue light falling on the statue's left hand. Yep. I, I, I really think we just gotta go right hand. Right hand lion on this one. I think we got left hand. Why? Because the vulture's alive. So are three of the other animals. And the boar and the lion are alive. Yeah. But the lion has the, no friends. The lion is one of the nine trickster gods. It has a connection to Wongo, which is a monkey, another one of the trickster gods. There's no other connection to the vulture, the zebra, the boar. Yeah, but it... I mean... Boar, the boar started... If you, if you think it's something else, I, I, I would love to hear your input. The lion ate the zebra, the boar starved to death, the vulture is alive, and the lion is a trickster god. Okay. What do you, what do you think, Ruffles? Sounds like you got something on your mind. The vulture is the only innocent one. How is the boar not innocent? He's dead. Doesn't mean he's <laughs> Okay, how is the zebra guilty he's of dead. anything? It's also dead. The boar is not dead. Oh, it's it did. It's right. starved to death. Okay, then the zebra is guilty because his friend starved to death? The zebra's dead. Doesn't matter. The vulture, the, vul the vulture survived because he ate the zebra's corpse after the lion had his fill. The boar starved to death because he had nothing to eat. Mm-hmm. Yes. But lion. one of the others has no friends. Lion has no friend, so it's not, they're not the friend yeah. of yeah, uh, that's Wongo. what I was looking for. That yeah, Wongo's lion. friend knows where to pour the water. The it's lion is ruled out lion. because the boar has to be friends with the vulture and the zebra for all of the rest of the statements to make truth. So if you okay. go with three trues being you know your ruling thumb and everything only associated with one thing, that only leaves the lion with no friends as the vulture statement. Yep, and the which means the vulture. The vulture well, is the only one that could know Wongo. Yeah. If Lion has no friends, the vulture survived because he was able to eat the zebra's corpse. The zebra's okay. only friend was the boar. The boar said the vulture is lucky to be alive because he ate the zebra. It's vulture. And left he hand. starved to death. It's got to be right. vulture. It's got to be hand. left hand. Yeah. God damn it. Cabal was right the whole time. What do you mean? Monkey's he said paw. left hand a while ago. Monkey's he said paw. monkey's paw, left hand. Yeah. yeah. Told you. We could just skip the is. whole riddle and just went with like the most generic monkey reference. Oh yeah, monkey's paw left hand. Let's move to the next puzzle. <laughs> I pour water in the left hand. Okay. You guys go back to the statue. And Adeline oh. pours water. Oh well, was there something else? I was gonna hang out outside the shrine. Okay. No, I don't. If I die, I die. So yeah, everyone I'm but Nex is it. going into the statue. Do I have that correct? Everybody else, yes. Okay. So, Adeline, you pour water into the statue's left hand. You hear a snarling, disembodied voice say, as a cube appears on the statue's head. And this voice says, Take the prize and curse your friends, or fight my children to claim it. What is your choice? Curse my friends or fight his children? That's what it says. I'm fighting some fucking kids. So you don't take it, is what you're saying? Not if it means I'm cursing my friends. Okay. A moment passes. Four large snake-like monsters, or sorry, monkey-like monsters, appear clinging to the statue, snarling at you all. And I think that's where we'll call it for the evening. <laughs> Too, late, no. Too late, I rolled initiative. <laughs> no, Too bad. We're going to call it here. It's a good stopping point.